every system is going to have to do something before 2024. So all systems are going to need to compile their inventory of service line materials. This is going to include both the private side and the utility side, and they're going to have to make it available to the public. Older utilities are going to have a little bit more to do. So those are systems with lead service lines, galvanized service lines, downstream of lead. They're going to also have to develop a lead service line replacement program. Um, this is going to have to include the private side now. And, and they're also gonna to have to modify their sampling pool to meet the new tier levels. We recommend figuring out where you're starting from. It may not be as bad as you think, but you really have to know where your inventory is starting from, what your corrosion control treatment situation is, and then you can figure it out and we can move forward from there. We've developed a customized tool that helps to break down the revision requirements uh, based on your specific system. So you fill out a short questionnaire, information such as your system size, whether or not you have load service lines, what your current corrosion control treatment is. And once you submit this, you obtain a customized report. And this is gonna help you focus on the specific requirements of the lead and copper rule that apply to your system. We've also been developing specific content. We currently have a webinar on there about the Newark Lead Service Line Replacement Program, and that's something you can stream for a PDH credit. We have several articles focusing on different parts of the new rule, and we also have resources that help with things like finding funding sources for private site replacements. And if you have any questions, you know, please reach out to us at water at cdmsmith.com. Utilities really need to start looking at this because it's already a difficult rule and it might only get more difficult to meet. You know, the data that utilities have been collecting for the past 30 years under the lead and copper rule will not provide all the answers that are going to be needed to know if you're going to be able to comply in with the new requirements, primarily because the sampling locations will have changed and primarily because there is going to be this a lower trigger level. So systems really need to get prepared because you can't look back at your historical data and know if you're gonna be okay. The new regulations have a 10 part per billion trigger limit, which is intended to capture uh, situations before they become a problem, before systems exceed the 15 part per billion action level. And then there are new sampling requirements, which if you have lead service lines, you're gonna to have to collect samples from the fifth liter in a premise plumbing versus the first liter. The fifth liter is intended to be uh, capture water that is in contact with the lead service line. And the lead service line obviously poses a higher risk of having higher lead levels than the current first liter. So if you combine those two new requirements, a lower trigger limit combined with uh, taking a sample from a higher risk location. Uh, there are many systems who right now may not have a problem, but could have a problem under these new protocols. So I would say utilities that have lead service lines, they need to start preparing today to make sure their lead service line inventory is as complete as possible, uh, utilizing available records and existing information. In addition to lead service line inventory, starting to develop a plan for how they're going to replace lead service lines, where the money is going to come from, uh, how to prioritize the replacement in their community, um, and start their outreach and public engagement process. A number of Midwestern states uh, have utilized the SRF uh, loan program. A number of those states have uh, a principal forgiveness component for lead service line replacement. There is also um, other opportunities for using uh, the Housing and Urban Development CDBG program for low-income communities. At the federal level, there is the WIFIA program as well as uh, the WIND program. In addition to the inventory and the replacement, we encourage utilities to look at their corrosion control optimization practices that essentially look at how low they can take their lead values uh, while maintaining compliance with other drinking water regulations. So if a utility is already on a phosphate corrosion inhibitor, the question that should be asked is, uh, what if we make a switch to a different phosphate or, or a straight orthophosphate or a higher dose of orthophosphate? Is there an opportunity to further re reduce uh, lead value? If a utility is not currently on a phosphate inhibitor, 
um, and wants to evaluate uh, phosphate-based inhibitors or, or other corrosion control treatment techniques, there are multiple tools like pipe loops that can be used uh, to evaluate the effect of these inhibitors, both on lead values as well as other uh, drinking water regulations. The objectives of the, regul of the lead and copper rule haven't changed, right? You know, number one priority is still to protect your customers, protect their health. Uh, you know, second, the corrosion control rule helps you protect your infrastructure. Uh, and lastly, you know, again, I, I would say that some utilities, uh, you know, are looking, you know, spending more time looking at what the downstream impacts are of, you know, additional nutrients such as phosphorus or some uh, some of the metals such as zinc or copper. So all of those are considerations. Uh, there's certainly more monitoring that's required. There's certainly a focus on uh, eliminating the, uh, you know, the lead materials within your system. And there's certainly a timetable associated with all of these requirements. There's increasing, uh, you know, pressure to, to get the most uh, use out of your existing supplies. And in many, t in many cases, our, our clients are looking at alternative supplies. So that could be bringing in a new surface or groundwater. It could be blending these supplies. And in some cases, it could be, uh, you know, reuse and advanced treatment of, uh, of treated wastewater. All of these, uh, you know, changes changes will trigger uh, additional uh, monitoring and testing of your water uh, to, to maintain the optimized corrosion control technique. CDM Smith provides the full services needed to address lead in drinking water from you know starting with inventory development, um, working on corrosion control studies. We've done well over a hundred corrosion control studies. Um, lead service line replacement program similar to what we're doing in the city of Newark where over 18,000 lead service lines have been replaced in less than two years. Um, you know, we can also help with obtaining funding for the private side replacements and communicating lead to the public, which is a very sensitive topic. We know there is a lot of work here and it can be very overwhelming. Um, CDM Smith, you know, we partner with the utilities. We know how to be in the driver's seat when it's needed. And when it's not needed, we can also be a passenger providing turn-by-turn -turn directions. So whatever that, that utility needs, what resources they have, we can help to supplement.